Today on Tech Tuesday, we're going to give you the final piece of the puzzle to make your suspension great again. What's up everybody, this is Jake Berkey from Busted Knuckle Off-Road and today we're going to continue our three-part video series on suspension. The very first video that we did was on four-link suspension design and it basically walked through how to build a four-link, what materials to choose, yada yada, there's a whole bunch of awesome stuff so make sure you go back and watch that video. The second one we did was on anti-squat and in those videos I talked about the third video which is this one which is roll center and it's going to teach you the last part of the three main things that we usually point towards whenever we're building a suspension and if you do those three things you'll have an awesome suspension too. So what is the roll center? The roll center is basically the point at which the vehicle rotates around the suspension. So if you have a high roll center, you're gonna have less body roll. If you have a low roll center, you're gonna have more body roll. And the way that you calculate how much body roll you're gonna have, it's a percentage. So if your center of gravity is here and your roll center is here, that percentage is basically going to say whether or not you have a lot or a little of body roll. So if you had a center of gravity that was equal with your roll center, technically you're not gonna have any body roll at all. If your roll center is down way low like this, you're gonna have a lot of roll. If you have it basically higher than your center of gravity, theoretically, it's gonna turn the opposite direction if you're in a corner, which is kinda of hard to understand or believe, but theoretically, that's what should, what should happen. And you've all seen this. If you think about it in your head, you, you go four wheel and you're out there and you're doing your thing, you've all seen the vehicle that like puts one tire up on a ledge and like the whole thing's about to tip over and it feels super unstable. Next time you see that, really pay attention to the way that the four link is designed and the way the four link is built. You'll go on Facebook and people will tell you, oh, just slap it together. I'm telling you, those people don't know what they're talking about. Don't do that. Spend your time, build your suspension the proper way, and you're not gonna be the guy that's over there about to flip over on a two foot rock. So this whole entire scenario, this everything that we're gonna talk about today is built around the fact that we want you to be stable. We want you to have a better off-road rig so that you can enjoy your experience better and you're not gonna be the guy who's tipping over on the trail just by taking a light turn. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to draw your vehicle from the top and you can plot out your, your wheel base, you can plot out your axles and all that stuff. And then you're gonna take your four link suspension and go back to that four link video that I talked about and it talked about your link separation and all that stuff and if you've done all that, you're basically gonna have a diagram that looks something like this. And you're gonna take your lower link bars and you're gonna draw a line that goes through the lower link bar out into space and you're gonna do the same thing with this one out into space and you're gonna come up with a dot. You're gonna do the same thing on your uppers but go in the opposite direction and you're gonna come up with a dot. And that dot and that dot are your instant center. And not to be confused with the instant center of like your anti-squat, this one's gonna be used as your roll center instant center. And that is gonna be basically projected down to the vehicle being drawn on its side. Once you have your vehicle drawn on its side and everything is basically just flipped sideways, you're gonna take those two points and you're gonna drop them down, bam, right there. You're gonna take that one, you're gonna drop it down right there. And then where this line intersects the center line for your upper link bars, that point right there is your rear instant center for your roll axis. Now your front instant center is gonna be right around here and what you do is you draw a line that connects the two and where it intersects the axle is your roll center. Okay, so now that we have our roll center plotted out because this comes down this way, this comes down this way, this comes across, you've got a bullseye there, this one comes down this way, you've got a bullseye here, now you've got your roll axis and your roll center, now you can figure out what percentage that is in height. So if your center of gravity is here and your roll center is dead even, so they're both the same distance from the ground up, that's 100%. And all you have to do is take your, your numbers and you know do your proportions and you'll come up with your percentage. If it's higher, then you're gonna have more than 100%. And if it's lower, you're gonna have less than 100%. And as you go down farther towards the axle with your roll center, you're gonna have more body roll. And this whole concept is, is 
difficult to draw by hand, but luckily we're living in the modern day and age and you can go to bustedknuckleoffroad.com and you can jump on to our tech section. You can download the four link calculator directly from our webpage. Uh, it was a really cool deal that was built um, uh, on Pirate 4x4. It's in a couple different tech videos and stuff out there. I highly recommend doing it because you can take all these points, you can plot them in there, you can play with your numbers and change a few things and see how it affects your roll center. So why would you want a high or low roll center? Um, there's a number of different reasons why you may want a high or you may want a low roll center. But I want you to keep in mind, just like every engineering problem, there's always trade-offs. If you take your roll center and you raise it up really, really high, let's say it's directly even with your center of gravity and it's gonna combat your body roll and it's basically gonna keep you from rolling over in the corners, you're at 100%. Everything is not fine and dandy because what happens with 100% or above on your roll center is that when you hit a bump, let's say you hit a bump on the driver's side rear, now your suspension is trying to rotate in that moment of your suspension trying to rotate, the higher your roll center, the more it wants to push the vehicle over instead of allowing the suspension to freely move. So the problem with that is that if you're running a high rate of speed and you hit something, you're basically going to hop the whole entire rear end over instead of allowing the suspension to articulate for that split second. Now, if you're rock crawling, you're not gonna notice that. If you're rock crawling, I highly recommend a high roll center. So lower speeds, higher roll center. It's just, you know, intuitive. But when you start getting up into the high rate of speed, you're definitely gonna wanna lower your roll center because you can then use a sway bar to counteract the body roll and you can tune your sway bar by taking a sway bar and putting it in the lathe and making it smaller or you know, on the bolt holes in the sway bar, you can adjust it up or down and you can change the way it feels. So having a high roll center doesn't always make the most sense. So you gotta kinda know where you want your roll center in relation to what type of driving you're gonna do. So having a high roll center is great for rock crawling, you know, anywhere between 180%. 80% down to 60% is great for all around, whether you're trail riding or just have an all-purpose type rig. 60% down, you're talking about vehicles that are going through the desert and they really want that suspension performance that's gonna soak up the whoops at higher speed. The point of this whole entire diagram, if you really start to digest the overall downward look at what we're trying to accomplish here, you'll realize a couple really key things. One, let's take and draw the Rockwell diagram. This is what happens whenever you have a Rockwell axle. You basically have to have your upper four link bars straight because the pumpkin's right there. So you end up taking these upper bars and you make them straight, which takes this instant setter and puts it way out here. But then to combat that, your lower links have to be really tight to get your triangulation. So you've seen this before and there's actually a couple manufacturers who sell this for uh, non-Rockwell vehicles, basically just regular off-road you know, suspensions. And what they do is they take the four length bars, I drew that one a little bit funny, but you get the concept. They take your four length bars and they bring them really close in at the chassis. So what does that do? Let's take these two four links and we're gonna move them really close so that our instant center for our roll axis is right here, okay? Now we're gonna take that and we're gonna drop it down, okay? And where that intersects this lower link right here is now your new roll axis. So now you theoretically, you've taken your roll axis and dropped it down, which took your roll center and dropped it down. So you went from 100% down to 60% just by taking your link bars and squeezing them in over here at the chassis. And if you watch the last video, you'll notice that the instant center for your anti-squat makes a big difference in how the vehicle launches and how the vehicle performs under acceleration. Now, what happens when we take our roll center and we take this uh, upper link bar and we bring it way up high so that we have a higher roll center? What's that doing? As you bring this up, it brings this down and it changes your anti-squat to a higher value. So if you keep your chassis point the same where it attached to the chassis on your upper, your lower link bars are gonna be seven to 10 degrees. We already talked about that in the video number one. Make sure you go back and watch that. And then you take your upper link bars and you make them taller. It's going to effectively change your anti-squat. So 
All of this can be easily figured out if you go and download the four link calculator, you go to bustedknuckleoffroad.com, you can download the four link calculator and in that four link calculator, you can play with these numbers and you'll find out that what I'm telling you is true. You can change the way that these link bars all are related to each other and there's gonna be pros and cons for everything. As you change your roll center out higher, you're gonna change your anti-squat a little bit. As you change your anti-squat, you're gonna change your roll center. All this stuff kind of plays on each other and that's why in the very first video we talked about a few couple key components and where to put them to give you really good overall you know, performance on your vehicle. Now, with your roll center, you want to make sure that when you plot this out, you're not only taking into consideration just one of your four links. So if you've got a vehicle that's four linked front and rear, your roll center is going to be based on the entire scenario from front to rear. So think about it like this. Let's take this into consideration. This is just the rear. You've got your center of gravity sitting right here. You've got your roll axis coming downhill like this. Now let's do the exact same thing for the front and you've got the same scenario with your roll axis going down again. What does that mean? If you take the point at which your roll center is up here on the rear and the point at which your roll center is on the front and you draw a line through the two, that's also called the roll axis. But because we're taking the whole entire vehicle into consideration and not just the front or not just the rear, what you're gonna end up with is a line that either slopes downwards towards the front or downwards towards the rear or something that's perfectly level. Now this is very important. Anytime you have a roll axis, you want it to slope from the rear of the vehicle down towards the front of the vehicle. And that makes that roll axis feel very normal to the average driver. So to change your roll center, obviously the separation at the axle has a lot to do with it. If you have a higher separation at your axle in the rear than you do in the front, then it's gonna slope downwards. It just so happens that it works really well with a front engine car because a lot of times your upper four link bars are gonna be what hits on the engine and you're gonna have a smaller separation in the front anyways. Now that we've got done discussing the triangulated four link and how we're gonna calculate that, uh, we wanna talk a little bit about just a regular four link or three link that has a pan hard bar. And, and I've talked about this a couple of times and, and there's a reason why I don't really like this setup, but I understand that there's a lot of times when you have to have that setup, like you have a factory vehicle that already has a track bar on it or a pan hard bar, or for instance, you've got, you know, limitations on your vehicle and you're trying to, you know, basically remove as much weight as possible. Losing an entire link on a moon buggy is worth, you know, 5% of the vehicle's weight sometimes. So this does have its place, but what you'll find out is that when you're building a suspension system like this, the roll center is going to basically be really low on most of these comparative to if you had a traditional, uh, you know, like a triangulated four link. Now this style four link, what you'll find is that the center of your pan hard bar is where your roll center is going to be. So in order to raise your roll center on a pan hard bar or a track bar style four link suspension, you basically have to take this point and raise it up and this point and raise it up. And what you run into is you either have no up, clear, up travel because this point runs into your chassis or you have to move this point inside the chassis and then it becomes so small or the bar becomes so short that whenever the suspension drops down, it wants to basically push the whole axle over to the side. And when it comes back up, it pulls it back over because that bar is what's controlling the lateral movement of the axle. So in this scenario, that's where you would calculate what your roll center is gonna be. And if you're doing that, or if you're designing that type of suspension, you'll realize that it's really hard to get a roll center that's high without basically cutting the whole entire top of the chassis off and having a pan hard bar that's sticking way up like some of those moon buggies are. So if you're watching this video and you're trying to figure out how you're gonna stop body roll in your vehicle, Basically, the roll center is the number one way to do that. If you raise your four link points and get your roll axis up, it's gonna help your body roll from happening. But if you're in a scenario where you can't do that or you've got your upper links maxed all the way out, the next best thing is gonna be a sway bar. You can get a sway bar directly from us, bustedknuckleoffroad.com. We have a whole bunch of different scenarios that you can use on your rig, different widths, different arms and everything else. Check out the website. And if you're in a scenario where you can raise your roll center, great, but do not ever, listen to me, please don't go and 
Facebook chat rooms and get talked into putting bigger springs on your vehicle or valving your shocks to stop your body roll. That is the wrong answer. It's not designed like that. That's not the way your suspension works. Go back and check out all the videos that we have. We have the four link video, we got the anti-squat video, and now we have the roll center video. We've even got a spring video. And if you watch those videos, pay attention to what we've got to say, your vehicle will handle and drive really well. Hit me up in the comments below if you have anything else, any other topics you want us to touch on and uh, hope to see you out on the trail. Did you say that again for the camera? <laughs> what are you going to talk about next, Jake? I'm going to talk about how Rockwell suck. <laughs> link, like a parallel three link with a pan hard bar, or it can be a, a um, shoot, my bad. Parallel three, three link. So, high roll center, less body roll, medium roll center for most trail type vehicles, and then a low roll center for your high rollers. High speed, guys.